Ladies and gentlemen, I've been bit by the snake method bug. Ow! Hey everybody, welcome back to another week of The Fogo Life. I'm your host, Captain Ron, and yes, we are talking about the snake method today. Woo! Not this kind of snake, no, 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 no. The charcoal kind of snake. We're gonna cook in a Weber kettle, and we're gonna show you a great way that you can go low and slow on your Weber kettle, control low temperatures with almost no worry whatsoever. Let me show you how to do it. I get asked the question all the time, Ron, how do you open the bag of charcoal with just you pulling the string? It's really simple, okay? I'm gonna teach you how to do it right now. If you look at the seam, it's kind of shaped like this, okay? It kind of has like this. You'll, if you look at it, you'll see what I mean. It's shaped like this. So what you do is you go to the open end of that, the open end of the V, but when you get to this, what you need to do is you gotta pull out the first little loop or two. Once you have it started, you just simply grab the end and pull. Just like that. Voila, open bag of charcoal. Now you know how to do it. What do we need for the snake method? It's plain and simple, almost nothing. All we need is briquettes, a fire source, and something to get the fire going with. That's all we need. It's a very simple process. There's not a lot to it, but it works really well. Now you've probably seen this before with briquettes, but what we wanna do is we wanna show you how the new Fogo briquettes work out with this. They made some coconut shells, they burn a little differently than your standard briquettes, so it's gonna be an interesting experiment to see how does the snake method work with Fogo coconut shell briquettes in the Weber kettle. First thing, some fire starters. We're gonna do this a little bit differently. We're gonna put these into a blazer ball. A lot of times, you'll use a charcoal chimney to start this, do something like that. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna start them inside the blazer ball, put the charcoal on top, and let the snake go from there. So, it's gonna go just like this. All right, so what we wanna do here is start it so that we're gonna make sure that the, once the thing catches fire, that we can have a chain, basically, of charcoal going along that's going to stay lit. So we wanna build a nice little pyramid up on top of our blazer ball. Okay, because we wanna make sure that it gets lit well. And what the snake method entails now is we're gonna put a rim around the outside, okay? And overlap them, just lean them on the next one, just like this, okay? I'm gonna go around as far as you want. Remember, the further around you go, the longer it's gonna burn, okay? So, usually about halfway, if you go about halfway, it's gonna be about a 10 to 12 hour cook. Hey Ron, how am I gonna get some smoke into there other than just the flavor from briquettes? That's easy, you can do the same thing. We're gonna use our bourbon barrel smoking chunks, use whatever wood you have there, or use these, they're great. It's a party in a bag, man. God, they smell so good. Anyway, what you do is you take them and you lay them around here so that as it burns, it's gonna catch some fire. So I like to do three chunks, just like that. And then once it's lit, I'm gonna put one right on top here. This way we're gonna go and get some smoke on it right away. So I think our next step, let's light her up. Now that we've got our grill lit, let's talk about what we're gonna put on here, okay? So we're gonna keep it real simple. We're just gonna do a small little pork butt. I bought this from Aldi. It's a boneless half butt pork roast. It only weighs three and a half pounds, all right? So it's a real simple one. First thing we wanna do is the same as always. We're gonna cut a cross hatch pattern in it and making sure we're getting down to the meat. You wanna go all the way through. The reason is, is we're gonna put seasoning on this. We want the seasoning to get to the meat. If we just put it on the fat layer, guess what? It's never gonna get down to the meat. So. Let's talk about rub for a second. You can use your favorite pork rub, whatever you want. If you make your own, that's great. If you have a particular store-bought one that you like, I happen to like this one. It's uh, made by a company called Pork Mafia. It's called Memphis Mud. I think this is my favorite pork rub in the world for pork butts. It's just got so many great flavors. So just gonna apply a light coat on it, cover it completely, but you know, not, we don't wanna completely submerge it in it. We wanna get that flavor of the meat shining through, but get down in these little crevices down here like this. There are a little, couple little tricks to the snake method that will help you have a much better and more successful cook and drive you a little bit less crazy. But one thing is your dome placement. So we started our fire right here. Our fire is lit directly under here. So what I have is my temperature gauge over here away from the fire and the vent kind of on the opposite side too. So nothing is directly over the fire. This way when we put our food in, it's gonna, the smoke and everything's gonna roll across the food and out the vent. And we're still gonna get an accurate temperature on the, on the thermometer reading. So that's a little tip for you, snake method made easier. Next thing I wanna do, I wanna put a drip pan down here. You can put water in it if you want, a lot of people do. I'm not really gonna add water because there's gonna be a lot of fat in this cook. So we do that, we'll put our grate right back on there, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna level this thing off at 250 degrees, so I'm gonna leave this open. I wouldn't even mind to get it to 275, but we're gonna leave this open, got that bottom one closer crack, so we're gonna watch as the temperature comes up and see right where it's at and adjust our vents from there. Good news, we are at 250 degrees on the nose. So let's go ahead and put our meat on. It's real simple, we're just gonna place it on there, right over 
our drip pan. Look at that beautiful butt. It's a beautiful butt right there. And close her back up. We're just gonna kind of check it every once in a while. We wanna make sure our temperatures are holding, but it should start smoking. I just noticed our wood chunks are right where the fire's starting to get. So this should be an absolutely beautiful cook. Snake method is a working thing like a champion. When you're doing a low and slow cook like this, a great idea is to have a temperature monitoring device like this, okay? This is my meter thermometer. It's a cordless wireless Bluetooth thermometer. What it does is gonna measure the, the meat's temperature. And it's also gonna give me the ambient temperature inside the, inside the grill. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick it in. There's a little line on here. We're gonna stick it in the meat, just right up to that line, okay? And what we do then, we close it back up and we monitor it. We monitor it on our phone. We go into the meter app. You can set the temperature, you can set what your target temperature is. It's gonna give you all the information that you need to know. It's a great thing to have. I just checked it out and I wanna show this to you. Look how cool, okay? I want you to show you something. Look how well the snake method is burning. It's burning right down here. You can see it's underneath, the bottom layer is lit. It's lighting the top layers. The wood chunks are burning, they're smoking too. It's working exactly how it's supposed to go. Look, the first wood chunk is almost all gone already. It's more than half gone. Pretty cool the way that this snake method works. Okay, kids, good news. The meter says that we're at 165 degrees. Now, I wanna go over something here, okay? This video is about the snake method on a Weber kettle and how you can smoke with it. I'm not gonna sit here and show you the whole entire thing and finish the pork butt. It's at 165 degrees. It looks beautiful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw it in this pot right here. I'm gonna cover it with aluminum foil. So we're gonna take this pot. We're gonna put it right back on here, all right? So that's everything I got. I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that you got some answers. If you have any questions about the snake method or anything like that, put it down below in the questions in the comments, all right? I'd, I'd love to help you out and answer some questions. Anyway, if you like what you saw here, if you're enjoying our content, please do me a favor, subscribe to our channel, give us a thumbs up and leave us a comment. All this stuff really helps us out a lot and we certainly do appreciate it and we appreciate you, our Fogo family. So that's all I've got for this week. Remember to get out and grill and I'll do me a favor and I'll see you the next time on The Fogo Life.